Yeah, so this is something that I'm calling at the moment tri -M grit. Um, and it's the idea is to extend the multi grid reduction time method, which you heard from uh, Ben just now, actually, uh, to constrained optimization problems, time dependent constrained optimization problems. Um, this is an idea that came to me uh, at the Switzerland meeting a few years ago after Eric Sears talk. And I really haven't had any time to work on it. I'm not an expert in uh, constrained optimization or optimization at all. Um, but finally, last uh, summer, um, I was involved in this IPAN RIPS program, research um, in industrial projects for students. And we had this team of students and we did a little bit of work on this. So this talk is to explain to you uh, what this idea is all about. And here's the outline. So I will go through the M-grid algorithm um, somewhat quickly, I, well, yeah, uh, since Ben talked about it quite a bit, and then I'll get into try m grid here and what we've done to date. Uh, this is still a very preliminary um, work. It has a lot to do. Okay, so you all kind of know the motivation. I won't dwell on this, but basically the reason we're doing parallel time is because of hardware and time stepping becoming a bottleneck. Our approach for parallel time has been to apply multi-grid methods to it. And this is just a little cartoon that illustrates in sort of the classical uh, 2D Laplacian setting, for example, what multi-grid is. It involves two main components, a smoother. Um, that's a cheap method that uh, in, in this context tends to smooth the underlying error so that you can approximate it on a coarse grid and have a coarse grid correction that complements relaxation and gives you overall fast convergence. And if you recurse this idea to multiple levels, you can get a cycle that is O of N. So um, that's what nice, what's nice about multigrid. And we can do the same thing for parallel time. This is just showing time stepping, um, what we'd normally do there. Instead, when you apply multigrid, you solve the full space time system at once and you iterate to convergence. Okay, so we all kind of know that. Um, Okay, now to the MGRIT method itself. It's based on viewing time stepping as a one step method given here. We usually use this phi operator applied at the previous time step to give the new um, uh, solution value at the current time. And um, so you can view this as a linear system if you're thinking of the linear uh, setting. Um, and this time stepping is just a forward solve of this lower block bidiagonal system. Um, and so what we do in the multi-grid reduction in time method is to recognize that you can apply cyclic reduction to this or block cyclic reduction and uh, then just do an approximate version of that. And we call that uh, multi-grid reduction in a more general setting. And um, just to say a little more, you know, the form of this is going to be important when I start talking about the derivation of triumph grid. So um, we just saw it in Ben's talk as well. Uh, if you look at it on the, from a grid perspective, if this is your temporal grid, um, we take some coarsening factor, Ben did coarsening factor K, I'm doing coarsening factor little m here, and that gives you a coarse grid. It also uh, partitions the fine grid into what we call an algebraic multigrid, F points in black and C points. And then the, the two components of multigrid um, are relaxation, coarse grid correction, for relaxation in MGRIT, we do this FC relaxation, as Ben said. Um, and in this case, F relaxation, for example, is you take some coarse interval and you basically just integrate to each of the black points. So that's equivalent to solving for the black points in this system. And you can do that in parallel. And C point relaxation is uh, analogous to this. There is a perfect coarse grid correction, uh, a coarse grid operator. It's petrov galerkin um, restriction times A times interpolation matrix. Also, the it's just the sure complement. And it has this lower block diagonal form again. And as and Ben showed this, you have the problem with it is that you get this E to the M power. So it's not a practical method to use, but if you did use it, you'd have an exact method combined with F relaxation. F relaxation plus this is an exact method. So in practice, we replace this with something else. And usually it's just a rediscretization on the course grid, but uh, this is the main choice we have to make for designing multi-grid reduction methods. 
And um, it's not always redisportization that uh, is what you need to do. Um, hyperbolic problems, for example, seem to be a little more difficult um, and interesting in that regard. So one of the reasons we do multigrade reduction time is because they have this non-intrusive property where um, you only really no, need to know how to apply phi, which is you only need to know how to do a time step, which means if you have existing code, you can wrap existing code in theory and, and have a pretty non-intrusive method. So we've been working on this for some number of years now, and it's really a multi-pronged um, approach, you know, it involves developing the algorithm itself, also some theory, um, and then also software proof of principle, you know, um, coupling to actual codes to try to learn how to better write the software and, um, and learn something about that. So the goal, this is just sort of reviewing certain things. The goal is to add concurrency that so we can get parallelism and speed up uh, by using uh, processors and time. I mentioned non-intrusive. We don't actually dictate what the underlying discretization is. We want this to work for all discretizations that people already use, as well as all the various techniques they use, such as adaptivity uh, down here. And we're really trying to converge to the same solution in, in general. And everything I've shown is, uh, was a linear perspective, but this extends naturally to the nonlinear um, uh, situation by just using nonlinear multigrid, which is the full approximation storage scheme, FAS. Um, Xbraid is our open source uh, implementation. It has this nice property um, that we can um, store only C points, so we can minimize storage to some degree. Um, that will not be the case for this new triangrid method. And um, there are lots of active uh, research topics. I've highlighted a few kind of more recent things. Advection has been something we've been looking at a lot later, a lot lately, uh, power grid problems, um, and even machine learning in the context of these three uh, codes. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to the triangrid method. Okay, so the realization is that uh, for, for doing this is that uh, cyclic reduction is, is in general uh, an approach that works for tridiagonal systems, so, or block tridiagonal systems in this case. Um, and I've you know, written the matrix here. So I'm gonna start with the linear setting again. I'm also gonna show you lots of stencils. A stencil is basically just a row of a matrix, okay? Or a block row, depends how I decide to do this. Um, so if I do block cyclic reduction on this, I can view it as a multi-grid method in the same way as before where I use F relaxation and this ideal coarse grade correction using the sure complement onto the C points. And so if you look at the individual multigrid components, you have interpolation, restriction, these are the stencils, and here's the uh, sure complement. So you see it also has this block tridiagonal form. Um, but one of the difficulties that we'll have here that we didn't have before is we have this diagonal block, C sub I, and you can see we need to invert that here um, to form the sure complement as well as to do the F relaxation part. And so this is a problem. And uh, what this is going to force us to do in this algorithm is to um, also make an approximation in our F relaxation. So it will no longer be exact like it is in MGRIT. In MGRIT, you have this nice structure here I've drawn again where the diagonal is just the identity. Um, so the only thing we have to approximate is RAP in the method. So I will talk about how we do this approximation uh, in the following slides. But first, let's talk about um, where these types of systems come from. And one place they can come from is in time-dependent time constrained optimization. So this is my notation that I'll use uh, in this talk for state control and adjoint variables. I'll use U, V, and W. This isn't that standard, but that's what I'll use. Um, the optimization problems here on the left, you have this functional J that you're trying to minimize, subject to, and here's my time dependent, um, say PDE problem or something, um, discretized. And this can be, this is all nonlinear in general. So we can, a solution of this problem is a uh, zero of the gradient of the Lagrangian script L. The Lagrangian is just a combination of this 
functional J and uh, Lagrange multipliers or adjoint variables W and the uh, constraint. If you take these derivatives, you get these three uh, types of equations here. You can see the last equation is just the, um, the forward time problem. And then, so we need to solve this uh, system and there's lots of techniques for doing this. Um, one of, we actually have an approach that's already in braid for doing this that, that takes advantage of parallel in time. This was developed by Stephanie uh, Gunter, uh, her advisor, Nicholas Gauger and uh, Jacob Schroeder and Stephanie implemented this. And this is sort of my summary of what happens in this method. Um, one way you can solve this system is kind of to do something that looks like a block, uh, an approximate block nonlinear Gauss-Seidel method. And basically goes as follows. You evolve the state variable forward in time using the third equation. Then you involve the adjoint backward in time using the first equation. And then you update the controls using the second equation. And you just keep repeating that until convergence. And the way you get parallelism with parallel time is, is you substitute this uh, forward and backward uh, evolution with a, say, one cycle of multigrade reduction in time or some parallel time method. That's what we do in x -braid. So um, we're going to try a different approach, uh, which is to apply this triumvirate idea to the full KKT system. Um, again, we'd like to have non-intrusiveness as we did with Embrit, ideally. That's sort of one of the goals. And um, what I'll show you, I'll do the same thing we've done in the past with Embrit. I'll start with the linear case and then I'll extend it to nonlinear using uh, FAS. Okay. All right. Um, so let's start with the linear case. Um, and this first approach is going to be a sure complement based approach for the linear system. You know, you often end up with a linear KKT system, even in the nonlinear case where you might have some outer Newton based type method. And um, I'm going to assume it has this nice form here. L is uh, where my, my phi time stepping operator is embedded. The U and V I'm going to assume are in invertible and pretty simple for the problems we looked at, they're actually diagonal. And D also has, we assume has some nice block diagonal type form. Um, Okay, so the first thing we do is basically a, a reduction method. We actually compute the sure complement for the adjoint equations. And if you do that, this is what you get for the sure complement system. You get this block tridiagonal form. You can see it's got a forward time propagator and an adjoint time propagator sort of built into it. And on the diagonal, you've got something complicated. So it's not something you can easily invert to do F relaxation. So uh, we need to, what we do is we do our F relaxation then uses an approximation to C sub i. And um, it's the way we're doing it right now um, is to take every appearance of this phi operator and just replace it with an identity. So instead of having this, you'll have this C i tilde where I've taken all the phi's out. Notice that that means that in the imp for implicit discretizations, I also have to modify this D operator with the D tilde because the phi is actually in there uh, for implicit methods. Um, and phi for implicit methods is actually a solve. So it's uh, in general a dense matrix and we're replacing it with the identity. But you'll see this actually works uh, for the simple problems we've looked at so far. So this is how we do F relaxation and C relaxation. Um, the coarse grade operator is um, Similar to what we do in Embrit, we basically re-discretize. So in this case, that means we use a coarse version of the KKT system and compute the sure complement. So this looks exactly like the, the A matrix up here, except that I've got phi delta now, and I want, I'm now on the coarse grid. And here I'm, uh, for everything I'm talking about here, I'll be doing coarsening factor of two. Uh, going to larger coarsening factors is also uh, it's doable, but it's um, um, a little more complicated and probably and, and almost certainly it will converge more like what we see in the classical multigrid setting when we take larger coarsening factors. Convergence normally is slower. Um, that's not the case for MGRIT because we have these exact F relaxations where we do this full solve across the course interval, which helps us a lot. Okay. 
So that was a, a sure complement approach to doing a linear trium grid uh, thing for optimization type problems. Uh, what we want to do is extend this to nonlinear. Um, so we're going to do that by looking at the full KKT system instead and applying this uh, trium grid idea. And um, even here, I'm going to start with the linear set, uh, step for setting first. Um, and what I'll do is try to devise a, a, a trium grid approach for this full KKT system setting that um, is equivalent to what I just showed you with the sure complement approach. So here's the stencil for the full KKT system for at time point I. So I've got um, these little three by three blocks now locally in time. Um, and uh, you can see you've got this uh, saddle point structure on the, on the diagonal here and some coupling backward and forward uh, with the uh, time integration and adjoint integration operators. Okay, so we need to define uh, a, an, an F and C relaxation here. And like I said, we want this to actually be equivalent to what we did before. Um, so it ends up being that what we do is something that looks like a restrictive overlapping Schwartz method for the adjoint variables. Okay, so this is actually what the method can be written down as. I've got these little restriction operators. So R sub I, for example, restricts a vector to uh, not just UI, VI, and WI, but it adds this extra UI variable from the previous time step. So that's where the overlap comes from. So instead of having this little SATA point system, my, my local block for, for this solve has this four by uh, four SATA point structure. And for uh, doing the in inverse of that, we're going to actually um, make the same approximations as before. I'm gonna replace phi and the adjoint phi by identity operators here. And then I'm gonna change these to D tildes. And then if I, you'll notice that if I take the, the um, sure complement of this, um, then I get exactly uh, C sub I tilde that I had on the previous slide. So this is how you get equivalence. So this is just updating the adjoint um, variables using an FC um, relaxation approach. The other thing we need to do is also update our UI and VI um, components, our state and our um, control. And for that, we just solve them in terms of the adjoint. So it's, you can just do a global solve of these things. And we do that after each F relaxation. So that's what we do for relaxation. This does give you the equivalent um, uh, iterations as in the sure complement approach on the previous slide. The nice thing about this is that I can extend it pretty easily to nonlinear by just replacing, for example, the action of this M tilde inverse by um, a local nonlinear solve. Okay, and usually we just, you just need to do like one step of Newton. Okay, um, I need to make sure I stay on time here. Okay. Uh, it is similar to, as far as the implementation, I've implemented something in Braid. It's only in a branch right now because we're still sort of developing this. Um, but it is fully parallel. Um, it works very much like MGrid. You have to define an app and a vector structure, and then you have these utility routines to define. The main difference is that instead of having the step routine, which does time integration, is we replace it with this residual and this solve, which is really an approximate solve at time point i. So you have to write these routines. Um, so one of the things I want to change, improve, is this is a pretty general interface. It doesn't really uh, incorporate anything about uh, time-dependent problems into it. I want to get more experience with this um, before we start tailoring the uh, interface for this to, to, to be um, you know, more tailored to time-dependent problems. Okay, so here's one set of um, results for um, a nice simple model problem. Um, we've got this quadratic objective functional here, um, and the constraint is either advection diffusion or a viscous Burgers um, constraint for the nonlinear case. And uh, what else do I need to say about this? Oh, yeah, the initial condition is a step function, and this um, functional minimizing this attempts to update the controls such that the solution is as close to the initial guess as possible for all time. So this is, you know, what the solution ends up being. You can see it, it, it does that uh, 
it achieves that pretty well. Um, okay, conversions. These are the V cycles of the method um, for the two different problems where I'm changing the number of time points as well as this regularization parameter. We get pretty good convergence uh, in a lot of cases for, multi, for a multi-good method. The, this is a pretty cheap multi-good method, by the way, um, because I've just got, my relaxation just involves a diagonal. You compute a residual and you just apply a diagonal matrix. Um, and these are V cycles. They're full V cycles. It goes down to like two degrees of freedom. So it's a pretty cheap multi-good method. So this is pretty decent. The thing I'm not happy with is the very variation in uh, iterations with either N or um, regularization parameters, especially in the viscous Burgers equation. So one of the things uh, we want to do is further understand this and improve the, the method um, from there. Okay, and that's part of what the future directions is about, improving the robustness and convergence of this thing. Um, and part of that will be to con develop some convergence theory, much like what exists for, for MGRIT. Um, Yeah, this Schwartz relaxation um, method is um, really a little bit bizarre. And so I'd like to look into that a little further as well. This is going to be coupled with the theory, um, theoretical um, part. Um, there, there are, I'll, I'll show some papers in a, in a minute, but there, there have been papers on multi-good for saddle point uh, type systems and optimization problems. And the relaxation, the fact that you have these saddle point uh, the setup on structure is kind of one of the issues with relaxation. Um, there's also a question about the coarse grid systems that I want to look into further. If you simplify, super simplify the problem you, and, and then look at the actual sure complement, you can see that it, uh, in some regimes, it, well, in general, it's not the same as the uh, coarse grid matrix we're using in the method I just talked about. Um, and so, in, there's the possibility that we could improve convergence by doing some uh, scaling of our KKT system, course systems in some way. And that's another area I want to explore. Um, I've done only coursing to, to by a factor of two, uh, doing something more general and getting a little of experience with that would be nice. Incorporating a lot of different features that we like adaptivity, things we've done in the, in the MGRID setting is, is another area to explore. Um, and being as non-intrusive as possible, which involves potentially changing the interface I just talked about, and then applying it to more applications in general. So for example, we might uh, think about applying it to machine learning as uh, Jacob and, and uh, others have done um, with other approaches. And it turns out that I, wanted, I will be involved with this RIPS program again this summer, and one of the, one of the things we'll do is, is to start addressing some of these questions. So multigrid for optimization is not a new idea. Um, here's a few references that I know about, but like I said, I'm not an, uh, an expert in this area. If, you, if there's some things you, you know about that you think I should know about, please tell me. Um, these references here cover everything from sure complement based approaches and using multigrid to solve the sure complement system to applying FAS directly. Um, they also have discussion about um, saddle point systems in general, preconditioning them, smoothing with them, et cetera. So I'll just conclude with that. Um, this kind of summarizes everything I said. I like to uh, always point out that, you know, this parallel time stuff is a major paradigm shift. It's really gonna affect all of us eventually. And so it's important that we're all doing this work. Um, and uh, so TriMGrid is trying to be as much like what the MGrid method is, but for these block tridiagonal systems with the application focus being time-dependent time constraint optimization. And there's a lot of work to do. I just mentioned some of these things a few minutes ago. So that's it. I'll stop there. Thank you.